A warm welcome to Disky Talk with Luyolo. If you're tuning in for the very first time, I do ask that you please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you've been a part of this journey, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this episode. So, on today's episode, we discuss all things Bafana Bafana versus Zimbabwe. As on today's episode, I have a post-match analysis of the World Cup qualifier, which was contested at the FNB Stadium, which played out to Bafana Bafana winning 1-0. So coming up into this game then, it was paramount that Bafana Bafana get all three points so that they could give themselves that three-point cushioning um, as they do go into the last qualifier where they will travel to Accra against Ghana. So we do know that Ghana dropped points as um, they played um, to a one-all draw against Ethiopia. So three points were mandatory and three points is what we got. So coming up into this encounter then, the blue team will represent Bafana Bafana, the red team will represent Zimbabwe. So when we have a look at Bafana Bafana then, in goals they started with Ronwin Williams and um, the approach then in this game from a tactical standpoint and um, the formation then was a 4-2-3-1. So at times then you would see uh, Percy Tao looked to join in, but mostly throughout the game it was a 4 2 3 1. So, when we have a look then at um, the back four, at left back, Mashejo started two center backs. We had uh, Rushin Duruk and uh, Unjawulo Roadblock Ngobo. Happy that he's back in his position. And then at right back, we started with Unigo Mobi. So, I was most impressed by um, our center back pairing within um, the heart of defense by virtue of the fact that they were so solid. And um, Zimbabwe then didn't really look threatening. And whenever they did try to penetrate, this um, center back pairing was so solid at the heart of defense, especially Rushin Duruk. This is such a quality footballer. And um, what I like then about this center back pairing is that they were able to complement each other very well which then bodes well for them as a pair going into the future I think that this could grow to become our best centre-back pairing you know for years to come for Bafana Bafana very impressed by these two at the heart of defence and then moving on then right along when we have at, uh, a look at um, the midfield we did start with Umukwena and uh, Better. So having a look at Umukwena then, I was very impressed by Umukwena. I think he had a very, very good game. And um, especially then when you look at that goal that he scored for us. So he does then um, start play in uh, that deep pocket of space. And um, he's then key to ensuring that that ball um, is progressed further up. We then find Keegan Dolly on um, the wide right channel in, in vertical zone 5 where then he comes on in onto his left foot then you have Mukwena making the run so that's what I really loved about this goal was that Mukwena starts play and then he then looks to attack the box when that ball is played wide which is um, something that caught this Zimbabwe defense off guard he gets in between the, the center back and the full back Keegan Dolly plays a lovely angled ball into the, into the back post then you have Mukwena finish off and um, from a qualitative perspective I just think um, Mukwena is um, a player that ticks so many boxes within the heart of midfield for this Bafana Bafana side I think he was also paramount then in ensuring that we managed the game well especially in the last 10 minutes where then he was able to ensure that we rotate the ball and um, we manage the game and ensure that we see the game out and then when you have a look at Upete, I wasn't really impressed by his performance. At times, he looked a bit nervous and uh, wasn't really too sure then when it comes to his passing. And um, I just think it was a blow that um, uh, Yusuf Mart did pick up that late injury. I think, though, going into the next game against Ghana, I think maybe starting... Um, and Sitole alongside Mukwena would be a much better fit. And then when we have a look at um, the three behind the striker, from the left-hand side, we started with Shongwane. We had Percy Tao, and then we had Keegan Dolly. With Shongwane then, um, I was... Look... He's also another player who, much like Upete and the two fullbacks, they played in spells and in patches where they had moments where they, they did... Um, they were doing very good things, but then there were moments where their decision-making was poor, and 
on the day they weren't really in the game, if I could say, from my opinion. Especially then when you have a look at Ushlongwan in first half and uh, even in second half. I feel like he only comes alive towards the end of the game where he has that long-range shot and then where, he's also, where he also creeps up into the box and Moby plays that ball in. And um, yeah, he only came into the game towards the end of... Um, the game but not really impressed then on the day and then when you have a look at Percy Tao another player then who I felt should have been brought off a lot earlier because I just felt that he was struggling in this game and um, he wasn't really then offering us that quality within the final third and um, also struggling then to penetrate whenever he was then in um, those pockets of spaces where he, he, he could penetrate for this Bafana Bafana side and then when you have a look then at Keegan Dolly yeah I think he had a very, very good match and um, very key then when it comes to how he was um, assuming that playmaking role, especially then whenever he did look to get into that half space. So with Keegan Dolly then, he does have the quality when it comes to the passes, but a moment that stood out for me was then when he did pop up into that half space and um, he hits that beautiful shot, but uh, the keeper makes a save. That was a very, very good shot and um, also caught the keeper off, off, off guard, but the keeper just manages to save it, you know? So I think Keegan Dolly had a very good display and um, he did then address the creativity issues, especially when it comes to um, the half space and uh, also then how he was operating from that wide right channel and how he'd look to cut in and um, ensure that then he is able then to create chances for this Bafana Bafana side. And then up front, uh, Mahopa started. Also another who I wasn't too um, impressed by. And um, overall, I just think that as Bafana Bafana, especially in the second half, we, yeah, I just feel that our play wasn't as cohesive. And um, second half, we played in spells, you know, and we were very inconsistent. You know, it's only when uh, Brooks comes in and uh, he looks then to um, control the game and see the game out. And um, he then really helped us when it came to our game management slowing the game down and ensuring then that we do get those three points. At times, I just felt that we could have had better control of the game, but we didn't where we were looking then to match um, Zimbabwe's intensity. That then opened it up a bit for Zimbabwe. But I must say then that um, towards the end of the game, I think that's when we got back into the game. We managed the game well and we managed to see it out. And the most important thing then is that we got the three points. Moving on then right along, we have a look at Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe then did line up in um, uh, a 4 5 1. And uh, in goals, then Zimbabwe did start with um, Hari, uh, a back four then of Chimemwe, uh, Matongwe, Galloway, and uh, Takwara. And then within the heart of uh, midfield, they had Kungwa, they had Nakamba, and they had um, Sarupinda. And then um, off the right hand side, they did start with Ismail Wadi off the left-hand side. They started with Biliat and then they had Moyo. So when you have a look then at this Zimbabwean side, um, their game model was um, pretty simple. They were always looking then to play Ismail, Ismail Wadi and uh, Kama Biliat. They were always looking then to penetrate from the sides. And um, whenever then at different phases Zimbabwe had the ball, then you would see Ismail Wadi and uh, Kama Biliat looking to come into the half spaces. But I just think that Zimbabwe struggled and um, they just couldn't grow into the game. And um, I also think then um, what Bafana Bafana did very well especially in the first half, is that they were able then to press the Zimbabwe side. So then it rushed them into um, playing passes that they didn't really want to play. And um, I just think that the lack of quality then from Zimbabwe on the day just... It, 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 it's one of the key contributors as to why Bafana Bafana then were able to see out the game. But uh, Zimbabwe couldn't really grow into the game. They couldn't really get back into the game. And um, at the end of the day, the most important thing then for Bafana Bafana is that they do get the three points. Um, I would say that in the first half, we did have a spell where we were playing really well and um, we shifted the ball well. It's just that the intensity dropped off and um, uh, it just didn't look 
cohesive enough. But um, I was then impressed with how we were able then to manage the game in the last 10 minutes, how we saw it out. And um, I must say then that um, I was impressed with how uh, Brooks came on and just ensured that we were able to hold on to that ball as uh, he took care of the ball very well. And then he was able to ensure that we slow down the game, we manage it and we see it out. So at the end of the day, then Bafana Bafana do get the three points off the back of a 1-0 win against Zimbabwe. So going then to Accra, we are in a very favorable position and uh, the mandate is very simple, don't lose. Don't lose and we qualify to the next round of the World Cup qualifier. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for tuning in to yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Luyolo. It was Bafana Bafana versus Zimbabwe as Bafana Bafana won 1-0 and picked up the vital three points. Signing out. <laughs>